Thunder Mifflin. This is Pam. What? Okay. Dwight, what happened? I was attacked by a black bear. Dwight, that looks really bad. Pam, get the first aid kit. False. It is not that bad. Here, look. Wait, what happened? I was in the parking lot, squeezing my beets for my annual beet juice competition with my cousin Moe. Dwight, and focus. You were attacked by a black bear? Yes, a black bear. The best type of bear. Michael, all we have in the first aid kit are band-aids and aspirin. Pam! Aspirin is the exact opposite of what we need. Dwight needs to induce hemostasis. Michael, what are you talking about? Everybody in the conference room, I'm going to explain hemostasis in five minutes. Here you see a ruptured blood vessel and the beginning of the vascular phase. The cutting of the blood vessel triggers endothelial cells to release chemical, release chemical factors and local hormones, which triggers contractions of the smooth muscle fibers within the vessel wall, known as vascular spasms, which decrease the diameter of the blood vessel and reduces blood loss. The chemical factors and hormones also stimulate endothelial division. The endothelial plasma membranes at this point become sticky, making it possible for platelets to attach. And next we have the platelet phase. Here you can see some platelets will attach to the endothelial surface of the injured vessel. This is called platelet adhesion. The now activated platelets release chemical compounds such as ADP, calcium, and thromboxane A2, as well as clotting factors. More platelets begin to attach to each other. This is known as platelet aggregation. A positive feedback loop begins stimulating further platelet aggregation and releasing more chemicals and clotting factors, eventually creating a platelet plug. In the final phase of hemostasis, known as the coagulation phase, there are three pathways that feed into each other. The extrinsic pathway begins outside of the bloodstream in the vessel wall, where endothelial cells release factor III, also known as thromboplastin. Factor 3 combines with calcium and factor 7 to form the tissue factor complex, an activator for factor 10. In the intrinsic pathway, activated proenzymes or clotting proteins, which are usually factor 12, with the assistance of platelet, platelet factor PF3, which combines with calcium in order to accelerate the activation of factors 8 and 9, which go on to form the factor 10 activator complex. The common pathway is activated by the complexes made by both the extrinsic and intrinsic pathways. Both these pathways form a complex to activate factor 10. Once factor 10 is activated, it signals the prothrombin activator to convert prothrombin to thrombin. Thrombin then converts fibrinogen into fibrin, which intertwines with the platelets, forming the final blood clot. Once the fibrin meshwork forms with the platelets and the blood clot is formed, red blood cells come to the injured site and attach. The entire clot then undergoes clot retraction, where the torn blood vessel edges begin to pull closer together. After clot retraction, the injured area undergoes fibrinolysis. The torn edges of the blood vessel walls have now pulled almost completely back together again, with platelets, fibrin, and red blood cells still holding it together. Next, thrombin enzymes, which are produced in the common pathway in tissue plasminogen activator enzymes, are released from the damaged tissue and activate the proenzyme plasminogen. 
the activation of plasminogen produces the enzyme plasmin, which begins digesting the fibrin and eventually the entire clot.